Hey guys, Sweaty Cat here, and today we're going to talk all about Ultimatum while attempting to build an IKEA bookshelf. Um, yeah, we've got three of these massive bastards. Also, that's my setup, by the way. Um, mm, we'll see how we get on. <laughs> it might be a case of I talk about Ultimatum and then I quit the bookshelf, but we'll do a little bit of one, a little bit of the other. So. I need to put pegs into thingies. So what is my issues, or not so much issues, but what would I like to see? What do I predict to see from Ultimatum in the coming uh, weeks? Or probably for coming days. I'm imagining GGG, maybe even as soon as tonight, is gonna drop a post saying, what do we think of Ultimatum now that we're like X days in? I think really the only thing that stands out, and if you make this one simple change, it would fix all the issues that people have with the league is uh, a wavelength. Wait, am I meant to put all these pegs in here? So... I need to put them on the outside pegs. Okay. So... Um, Trial Master is incredibly rare. In exceptionally rare. Uh, so much so that of the entire Bay Class crew, I was the only person, because obviously I'm the most talented gamer, uh, to see Trial Master. Grimro did a video recently, talked about his thoughts on Ultimatum, and from all of Ultimatum League, he's only had two Trial Masters. And Grimro plays more and more efficiently and faster than most people in the world, uh, or slightly exaggeration, but he plays a lot in like super softcore degenerate thing. He, he bangs out those maps. So if he's only seen two, then good luck to uh, the average dude playing the game. And the last time we saw a league which was like this rough when it came to the scarcity of seeing the final boss, I'm actually going to say, Bubs, you're sniffing, please don't push the camera over. I'm actually going to say Betrayal and Syndicate. And you're like, really? But like, that was a deterministic boss. So, with Launch Betrayal, um, the way that Katarina used to work is it was character, not a countdown. And you had to play until like 95 um, or just like spam all hell out of quarry to actually see Katarina. I remember using Mathel as an example of this um, when I did my video talk about like, how Kata rates needs to be buffed during that league. So he was like finishing his first character league around like level 93, 94 or something, and he was still yet to do Katarina. And because it was character, not account wide progress, it meant that he would theoretically never see the fight if he was just to re roll every like, you know, four or so days on a character playing 93, 94, which is what he usually does. And that's obviously an issue, especially since a lot of people don't even get one character that far. So, if they make the higher waves more common, uh, specifically do it in reds, um, that would fix many problems. One, for the people who say it's not rewarding, weird, it is very rewarding, but it would make it more rewarding because you're seeing more waves and you get better rewards the later into the waves you are. They'd make Trial Master more common. Trial Master gives very good rewards. He frequently gives like tier zero uniques, exalted orbs. When I did it, I got an exalted orb and then everything I'd gotten from the previous waves. And then obviously I got the uh, helmet, which is really powerful. I really like Glimpse of Chaos, fun little hat. Um, so you make it more rewarding, you make it more difficult because each wave is more difficult. You improve the availability to the final boss and seeing final boss is fun. And it also fixes my main issue of the league which is modifiers. So I spoke about this a little bit on Bay Class. But with the way that modifiers work, um, and the fact that you are more likely to see a modifier that you've already like selected once, you run into the issue that you end up ignoring most of the mechanics. So if your build can ignore Ruin, which is what most builds ignore, you pick the two different Rune mods, upgrade it to three, so that's instantly six modifiers, which does nothing pretty much to your build. Then you pick Choking Miasma. That's nine modifiers which do nothing. Congratulations, you've gotten to wave nine and you haven't been challenged once. The real challenge from the mechanic comes from when you're getting all these different modifiers stacking on top of each other. So you're getting like the storm um, rune circles on the floor. Then you're getting like the flame skulls. Then you're getting the icy postules. When you have all of those at the same time, well then suddenly dodging these mechanics is quite difficult. Whereas if you have just one of them, it's complete joke. And then when you have the fact that most builds have at least three or four modifiers that they can just straight up ignore, 
For example, you know, you're playing Exanuate, so you don't care about the reduced AOE, reduced proc speed stuff. Um, or you're playing a CI build and you don't care about shaking my asthma, or even if you're not playing a CI build, you don't care about shaking my asthma because it just moves so bloody slow. Making more waves means you're going to have to make more choices, meaning you're more likely to run into modifiers which aren't good for your build. It just solves a lot of those problems. I think it would also go a long way to uh, probably, I would actually probably remove the preference, like the waiting. So if you pick a mod once, you're more likely to see it again. I think they should just straight up remove that. I think the mechanic would be a lot more um, difficult and therefore a lot more engaging if you had just more random choices. If you were to take Ultimatum out of Path of Exile, let's say that we were to make a roguelike built around all the systems of Ultimatum. Um, if a roguelike had a thing where you could choose what modifiers you do and you don't get... Right, what am I meant to do now? Oh god, I'm meant to be screwing into the big... These long boys. Um, if you had a roguelike, which was built around that system, it'd be super trivial. The, the main feedback at the beginning is like, whoa, oh, this, this game is way too easy. Because in the first, like, three waves of a roguelike, which only goes up to ten, I pick all the super easy ones, and then I ignore all the really hard ones. Like, the, you would change that. And I feel like as soon as you take Ultimatum out of the context of PoE and into the context of being a second game mechanic, then that becomes a really obvious, like, thing to mess around with. So... Yeah, now how do I do that while keeping you guys in shot? Onwards! Let's get moving. So that's something which needs to be fixed. Crotch shut ink. Um, so yeah, that's something which needs to change. Ooh. Skedaddle past. Oh god, I haven't got anywhere. I haven't got enough floor space for this, Bubbles. I haven't got enough floor space for this one, Bubbles. What do you think, Bubs? <laughs> Taki, have I, have I mentioned that your content's a bit, like, shit recently? Uh, oh, 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 fun. Fun, upbeat, um... I think I'm going to take this and work this one out without you because it's going to get tricksy. But one thing I can treat you to is... There's a glass panel and you've now enjoyed Bubs showing off her bottom. Bubs, don't... <laughs> Shave, Taki! It looks disgusting! Yes, I'm Taki. Have a good day. Bye-bye.